Recording. Okay, recording. Recording started. Ah, then you a little bit. So, ah, uh, polar, polar form of the complex number. If we have this, you know, is imaginary part of Z. This is a real Z, and we have some point with the coordinates x, y. So this is a complex number x plus i y. But we can represent it in, in a different way, so the same point, if we connect it with the origin and the length, the distance of the point to the origin is r, and the angle is theta. Then we can rewrite this. We'll have what will be x coordinate from here? If this is r, this is angle uh, theta. Uh, cos. Uh, uh, cos. We have r cos theta. What will be y coordinates? Uh, we will have uh, will be y mm -hmm. sine theta i. So uh, sorry, y. Uh, r r uh, sine theta i. Now. That will be r, we can take as a common factor, and we get cos theta plus i sine theta. Make sense? Now, this expression cos theta plus i sine theta called cis theta. Called cis and so we got this we can write the complex number as z equal r cis theta where r called modulus which is a distance from the origin and theta called argument theta called argument a modulus theta called argument and theta this is this cos theta plus i side theta called argument now what small problem we have here what's this this is this yeah now with the theta with the end theta because Every 2 pi will be repeated, so we will get infinitely many numbers. So we need to make a domain. And that called, we say, argument, principal argument, theta, is within domain from negative pi to pi. Argument is, a, uh, sorry, not argument, argument z. Argument z of the complex number, theta is argument that. If it's capital letter, that means principal argument. And we take, because we can take any interval of 2 pi, from 0 to pi, but it was taken from minus pi to pi. If we have then, if you write the small letter argument z, that means it can be repeated every 2 pi. But we always will be pretty much looking for principal argument from my. So we're looking for n in the domain from negative pi to pi. Yeah. So how we turn the complex number in Cartesian form into the polar form? Let's say we have number. We have one plus root three i. How we'll find r? Use it Pythagoras. It will be square root of x squared plus y squared. If this is a x plus i y. So what r will be equal? Uh, root 4. 
which is equal to 2. So i equals 2. Now, how we can find theta? It will be 10 negative 1 of y divided by x. So equals 10 negative 1 of root 3. Which is just 1 3. Which is 1 3. So we can rewrite this number in the polar form as 2 cis pi 1 3. Then we rewrite it, this number 1 plus root 3i into the polar form 2 cis pi 1 3. Let's do inverse operation. Convert from the polar form into the Cartesian form. Is Cartesian x plus i y? Uh, yes. So we have, for example, uh, 5, 5 cis uh, of pi on 4. 5 cis pi on 4. Equal 5 times cis is cos pi on 4 plus i sine pi on 4. Mm. Equal 5 times root 2 on 2 plus i root 2 on 2 becomes 5 root 2 on 2 plus 5 root 2 on 2 i. So where is where is single process? This is the point of five, yeah. So we can turn from Cartesian into the polar, from polar into the Cartesian. Now, why we need to have two different forms? The thing is, with the polar form, multiplication and division of the complex numbers becomes very convenient. If you multiply or divide complex numbers in the polar form, it's not convenient to add or subtract them, but very convenient to multiply. Because if we have 2 z1 equals r1 cis theta1, and we have z2 equals r2 cis theta2, then z1 times z2 will be equal r1 times r2 cis theta 1 plus theta 2. And division z1 divided by z2 will be equal r1 divided by r2 cis theta 1 minus theta 2. So it becomes very, very, very convenient to multiply. This is cos theta plus i sine of theta. Hmm? Question? So it's very convenient to do multiplication or division. Let's consider an example. Let's consider some example. We have... Let's say we have... Uh, Example 5, page 14. Let's say we have number b equals 3 plus root 3i. And we have u equals 2 cis pi on 6. First, and we're looking for u times v and v divided by u. What we should do first step? Convert v into the polar form. So, which page is this? 40, example 5. Yes, yeah, page 40, example 5. So, let's find r. It will be square root of 3 squared plus root 3 squared. So it will be equal square root of 12 or 2 root 3. Now, what will be the uh, theta? 
equal 10 negative 1 of root 3 on 3, which is equal 5 or 6. So we have that we can rewrite complex number B as we can write as 2 root 3 cis 5 or 6. Now let's multiply them. Let's multiply them using multiplication of the complex numbers in the polar form. So we will get V times U will be equals 2 root 3 times 2 becomes 4 root 3. Cis, we have pi on 6 plus pi on 6. So we we'll get 4 root 3 cis pi on 3. Yeah. We added angles. Make sense? Yeah. How much easier it is compared to if you multiply them both in the Cartesian? Even more easy if we divide them. Because V divided by U will be equal. We divide the uh, <coughs> Modulus, we divide 2 root 3 divided by 2, so we get just root 3, and we have cis pi on 6 minus pi on 6, which is, is root 3, cis 0. Do you just leave cis 0 as that? Uh, is it is a number? Yeah. No, so what, what is cis 0? No. no, says 0 is cos 0 plus i, plus I. I sine 0 no, it's just and it's it, will be, it will become 1. Yeah. It will become 1. Yeah. But can you simplify all No, you, it all depends on which form you need to give answer. You need to give answer in polar form, you give answer in polar form. You need to turn into the Cartesian form, you turn into the Cartesian form. Just fine. Hmm? And it says find V divided by U what do you Equation doesn't yeah. uh, Equation doesn't specify so you can give your answer like in problem. any way. Could we do five days or plus? Uh, no I no I did part of C and D. I did part A, part C and part D. B convert U and W in Cartesian form. Uh, convert u, so we have u is 3 plus root 3i. So, sorry, u equals 2 cis pi on 6. How we convert it into the Cartesian form? It will be 2 times cos pi on 6 plus i sine pi on 6. Equal 2 times cos pi on 6 root 3 on 2 sine pi on 6 1 half plus i times 1 half expand in brackets we get root 3 plus i and same, in the same way we can do with the double I want to look into the more interesting uh, question, page uh, 44, example, uh, before doing example 10, uh, complex number z in the power 5. In the polar form, if we have if you have z equals x plus i y and you need to find z in the power of y, it will be quite a big algebraic exercise. But in the part in the polar form, if you turn it into the polar form z equals r cis theta, then z in the power of 5 equals i in the power of 5 cis 5 theta.
So this is example two, so kind of just like six, and then you do three x plus i y plus i y. This is example two, so kind of just like chucking the cabs. Okay, which question is this? Which page? It is page 44, uh, example uh, 10. Okay, we have a similar example 9 from, of course, from the exam 1, take 3, so I want to show how to do it, take 3. Mr. Uh, Bindu glasses? No. No? I have not used it for some time. Oh, nice. So, uh, let's find now we have z equal 1 plus i root 3 over 1 plus i. And we need to find z in the power of 5. How we do that? First, let's turn both numerator and denominator into the polar form. 1 plus i root 3 equal. What will be the modulus? Um, Square root of two. 1 plus 3 will be 2. Cis. What uh, will be the argument? Uh, 10 negative root 3. Part 3. 3. Because we have 10 negative 1 of root 3 over 1, which is pi root 3. And 1 plus i. But see, can you just select the top and do the top first? He's doing it by parts. Yes, yeah, so you can just split it into i. No, I found I converted the numerator into the polar form. Yeah, now I'm converting the denominator into the polar form. What will be 1 plus i in the polar form? What will be modulus? Uh, 1. Root 2. Root 2. Oh, I think one in that. Yeah. Equal. Root 2. Cis. Pi root 4. And when we divide, so now we divide z equal 2 cis pi root 3 divided by root 2 cis pi root 4. Equal 2 over root 2 root 2. Cis four pi and three minus pi and four equal root two. What is one third minus one quarter? Pi twelve. Root twelve. So root two cis pi and twelve. Now we put it into the power of five. Z in the power of five will be equal root two in the power of five. Which is that okay, equals root two? No, 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 no. Okay. root two squared five. Um, root two squared is two, two. squared again four. Eight. Another two, four root two. Four root two. Cis five pi on twelve. Four root two. Cis five. And when they say find the modulus and argument, do I write r equals So answer is answer is r equal four root two and uh, theta equal five pi on twelve. Okay, thanks. So argument is the theta. Argument is an angle. If you get angle out of the let's say after multiplication you get it to over the pi, you need to Rotate it back because it has to be from minus pi to pi. Just need to remember, not 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi. Yes. What did you do when you did z to the 5? This is, I did this thing. Uh, we, uh, we put uh, modulus to the power of 5 and multiply argument by 5. Yeah. Uh, it says argument with a lowercase a. So shouldn't I be able to do it? Like, 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 Okay, so unless they go lowercase a r g. No, when when you when it is in the like shorter form, not what argument, if it this will means from minus pi to pi, this means with all repetitions 
uh, over the car. Okay, that's uh, all new stuff for today. Yeah. Like, subscribe, and donate to help fight terrorist countries and organizations like Russia, Iran, Hamas, whatever. Support Ukraine and Israel. Thank <laughs> you.